Hey everybody, Icy Cat here. Today I'm joined by animation director Scott Mitchell for Rainbow Six Siege. Scott, let me start by asking you, we just closed out the beta not too long ago and already some of that information is pouring in. What have you guys really learned from doing the beta and how has that really kind of improved the game? So from the closed beta that, that, uh, that you guys may have just played, we learned a whole lot specifically about matchmaking. Uh, it's not that we didn't know that there were, you know, there were things there that we needed to work on before, but uh, really this was uh, our time to test out how the matchmaking was going to work, how the networking, etc. So uh, we've paid really uh, good attention to that. There were patches and, and uh, bug fixes that were going out live during the closed beta, and that's something that we'll continue to work on. How much has player input shaped the game versus what the original vision for the game was? Player input has really shaped Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, you know, we've uh, we've really been focused on the community. We're looking to build a, a strong community that's uh, very vocal, uh, as we've seen. By offering things like the closed alpha and the closed beta, that's a great way for us to get feedback. Uh, and again, that's super important because, uh, you know, you, you want to get as much as you can out of this game that, that you've just paid for. So uh, having a full support team on the future you know, is also going to help nourish that. But specific things, uh, that I could go into, you're looking at a lot of balancing for operators specifically. Um, characters like, uh, operators like Ash, for example, you didn't see her in the closed beta because uh, due to player feedback, we felt that we had balanced her to the way that most players wanted. Uh, on the other hand, the point men are still being called out as being uh, OP, so th that's something that we still need to work on and that came back in closed alpha and the closed beta, so you know we're, we're working on it. As animation director, what's something you're most proud of? As the animation director, I am most proud of definitely the way that the animation team works with the design team and the programming team. They're a really, really tight-knit. Um, they sit back to back, they brainstorm together, they design everything together, um, which is amazing. Uh, Ubisoft is really big on uh, design as well as art, and I think it really shows in Rainbow Six Siege. We've got some great new technology, uh, that allows us to really push the limits in terms of animation specifically, um, which is, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun to play with and a lot of fun to work with. Is there like a specific example of that? So something very specific um, that, that I'm proud of uh, would definitely be how um, the animators in first person manage to uh, really bring out the visual language. Visual language is like a film term basically for, for a composition and a lot of people kind of groan, oh okay, you know, he's talking about film, but you know, there's a lot of things that we can, a lot of tools that we can apply to games and specifically in, in first person in terms of what we call science and feedback. So, um, Is there something that you personally are proud of though? One specific move, uh, for example, I'm really proud of the feedback that we give to players as to which walls are destructible or which surfaces are destructible. The, uh, the, the breach charge, for example, if you're wandering around with a breach charge in your hand uh, and you're away from a wall, you're not within the interaction distance, then the hands are much lower. So you only see a corner of the, of the charge sticking out from the bottom of the screen and maybe a little piece of a colorful logo, but not all of it. Well, the second you get close enough to a surface that is destructible, uh, the arms will raise. So those are the kinds of things that I'm really proud of the animation team. They kind of came forward with all these things. And again, we call that uh, kind of the visual language, or a, which is a fancy term really for, for composition. So fan favorite map Chalet is returned from Rainbow Six Rogue Spear. And uh, I imagine there had to be a lot of challenges bringing something like that over to what Siege is doing now with the destruction and all kinds of uh, you know elements interacting together with gadgets and barricades and things. How much of a challenge was that to bring across and, and make it work with the new game? So level design in Rainbow Six Siege is a huge challenge for, for the team because of the destruction. You have to be really careful uh, where you're choosing to put a destructible surface. So the chalet map has changed considerably, especially in the interior, which is where all the main action happens. Uh, you're always opening up new sight lines, and the map is never going to be the same way from, from start to finish. It's never going to be the same depending on which operators are being used by players either. So it's a, it's a, a difficult balancing act, again, on the level design side to try and make sure that the maps are, are playable and there's no exploits and that kind of thing. So one thing I've really been wanting to know is what happened to Team Camel? I mean, originally that was clearly part of the vision. 
uh, the, the box art even shows, you know, like Team Rainbow versus the terrorists, and we saw a gameplay demonstration of the player versus player model using that same kind of thing from about a year before. And now that's changed, and now the CTUs each wear their own individual camos, and you have mixed units of uh, the, the same camo on one team versus the other, and uh, what, what changed there? What, why do that? So we wanted to show um, which teams the operators were, were from, from the major, uh, five major CTUs. So whether they're from the SAS, whether they're from SWAT, whether they're from uh, GSG-9 or, uh, or Spetsnaz, for example, um, or GIGN, they all have a, a base silhouette that they all work from, a base color scheme that they all work from. There's base traits. Uh, all the SWAT have sunglasses, basically. Uh, so we wanted to give them all um, character traits that fit within their CTU and then uh, work on the devices beyond that. So kind of what their specialty is and then add things to their characters um, to uh, augment their silhouette to show them, uh, to show the player from a distance kind of who they're going to be playing against. So which is your favorite operator? My favorite operator? I have a couple. Um, actually, any of the point men. Uh, I really enjoy using because um, I before playing Rainbow Six Siege before I, I joined the team I, I started playing early builds I was the guy that would run in <laughs> and not really pay attention to the pacing of the game and be tactical and because of the concept of one life got owned very very quickly so the the point man because they move much slower uh, they have a pistol so you need to be very precise uh, and now, especially the shield opens up when you want to reload. Uh, the front of the shield, the, the glass, the, 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 yeah, the, the, the glass gets full of bullet marks that don't go away. Uh, it, it's really taught me to take my time and be careful. Uh, but also it's cool because you get to be the, the, the front man that goes in, which, which I like doing. And you get to protect the rest of your team. Beyond that, uh, glass is one of my favorites as well because I like to start uh, in like a spiral way and kind of work my way in so work my way around the perimeter and see who I can take out a little bit from a distance as as I go in so with glass with this scope that's a that's a huge help so when people think of a game with destruction elements the first thing that comes to mind is battlefield and what they've kind of done with the frostbite engine what sets siege apart how is it different than that you know what does it do that's groundbreaking and new and unique so what's specific about Rainbow Six Siege Destruction is that it's procedural and uh, it actually changes the gameplay. So what it's meant to do is open up new sight lines and make the map change differently. So you can't really camp in Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, people can come in from behind you, they can come in front of you, they can knock down barricades, come through doors, they can come through windows, they can even come through the ceiling. So uh, people use the destruction to their advantage and also to others' disadvantage. That's what's really different about us. So to kind of expand on that, how much more challenging does that make map design? For the level design team, it's a real challenge to try and make a map because, again, because all these sight lines are being up, opened up all over the place, you know, the, the map gets destroyed pretty much. Anything that's not part of a, a, a supporting structure of the building can be destroyed with, you know, with precision. You can knock out an entire barricade that somebody's put up or you can knock out a single panel. You, know, you can fire at a spot on a wall that's destructible and you know, open up a little hole so that you can just peek through and kind of spy on what's going on, or you can open up a huge hole. You know? So it's, uh, it's a super difficult challenge for the level design team to make sure that all that's balanced. So one thing I really like is that there's a lot of guns in the game. There's a wide variety, they're very detailed, um, and they're just very interesting and, and cool, but I find myself a little frustrated when I set up my operator that the loadouts are so heavily restricted to the choice of only a couple of weapons per operator. Has there been given any thought to opening that up a little bit or I mean what went into that decision? So the reason why the loadout is limited per operator is specifically because balancing. Already trying to balance 20 different operators that uh, you know, on the attacker side and the defender side is is really a daunting challenge. So again, it's all about trying to make sure that they're balanced, there's nobody that's too overpowered or overpowered for that matter. Um, and if we added in on top of that a loadout, uh, you know, that you could switch up, well, it would be near impossible to control the balancing at that point. 
And has there been any consideration given to opening up the recruits a little bit more as far as like maybe allowing them to save attachments onto their weapon loadouts so that they're not all iron sights all the time? Uh, I'm not sure actually if that's planned for the future. Um, we'll have to see what comes. So Terrorist Hunt is my favorite mode to play in any Rainbow Six game. And I think in Siege, you guys have really brought it to the next level. Um, I mean, you've got things like the Siege Generator, the AI Strategy Manager, you've got the random placement of traps and barricades, the enemies are never in the same place twice, you, the random playlists are coming in, you know, you're cycling through day and night variations of each map. How challenging was it to get all these complex systems to work well together as they sort of all layer in to build these, these playlists for you to experience as you go through the game? So, uh, first and foremost, the creative director said, okay, look, the AI has to play like a player. We have to give them access to whatever the player has so that it's a similar experience and we can really play off of all the values of, of the PvP experience and bring that also to you know, the terrorist hunt experience. We also look back to our roots and figure it out, you know, kind of what are the key elements to, to making a good terrorist hunt. And, uh, you know, tactics definitely and team play is, is, is important and all that. So now having super intelligent AI, we really went back to the drawing board with the AI. And especially when you have to try and make them think and, and play like a player, it's really, really difficult as, as you mentioned. So, you know, balancing is involved, uh, pathing is involved, uh, animations involved, uh, piggybacking off of player systems is involved. Uh, it was really a, a huge task for the AI team to take on. I think they've done an absolutely fantastic job. So if I've never played a Rainbow Six game before, if I've never heard of it or checked it out or, or tried it before, uh, why should I? What sets it apart? So why should you pick up Rainbow Six Siege? Why should you start playing? Well, definitely because we're not like other shooters out there. And that, that's something common that we've been hearing from everybody is like, wow, that, you know, you really are different with the, the whole idea of the siege, the, the destruction, 20 different operators, and on top of that, the concept of one life, which is, which is really a, a, a brand new concept to us. So uh, all of those reasons make it that it's a fresh new shooter experience that, that you really, I think you really should enjoy. All right, there you go. Well, thanks, Scott, for joining us, and thank you for watching. And if you like the in-depth content we cover on Rainbow Six Siege and you want to know all the latest exclusive news, information, and commentary, please go ahead and like and subscribe. You want to wrap us up? So I'm Scott Mitchell. Thanks for watching.